Evening. Hello. How are we all? Welcome to Dan Rock's Rock Box. Not only is this going out to Facebook, but it's also linked to YouTube as well. So you can always find these videos on our Rock Box page. Um, hello, Anne, and hello, Leslie. Hope we are all well and good. A little bit cold today, a little bit Baltic, but um, yes. So before we carry on with the quartz, if we can just link in with our weekly connection of the crystals. So if we can, um, today we were just connecting again. Um, <laughs> so um, just finding a couple of minutes to get in there um, and just to connect with our grounding crystal so yes very cold very cold hey amanda hey lucy hey carolyn so hey lucy so dan my connection with tiger's eye rod was so lovely again the same as yesterday i felt a heartbeat kind of energy from it which is very comforting I saw the face of an Aboriginal man. We were then walking together through the vast expanse of the outback. We didn't speak, but felt we didn't need to. He had very kind eyes that sparkled when he smiled. Okay. Yeah, so a man, um, so Lucy, this might be um, a little journey. Um, I think this uh, um, Aboriginal man would more likely be a guide for you. I think he is somebody that is coming through at the moment, um, wanting to connect, especially with that um, you didn't speak but didn't feel like you needed to. Um, that rings alarm bells to me that there is a guide there working with you. So, yes, I know. Um, I don't do clean shaven and I hate being um, clean shaven, but just before I popped into the shower I thought I'd give my beard a trim um and the battery ran out so uh, my only option was to charge it which I could have done but me being me wanted something right now and not having to wait um so I went clean shaved so yeah I, I feel very naked but um yeah So, yeah, absolutely, Lucy. So, yeah, definitely think that there is something working there with the tiger's eye. Um, solar plexus energy. I take tiger's eye, and we will be working with tiger's eye in the earth star chakra. So, um, again, aboriginals, they are very much with their land. They're very much um, tracking um just very in tune with Mother Earth. So a nice little um, tribe to connect with there. So see how that goes. See if any of that is coming through. And also, just to keep you all updated on the running of the week. So tomorrow we're going to be um, joined by the lovely... Esther from Moon Kestrel's Nest. Yes. And then Thursday, we're doing our live full moon altar. And then Friday, we're going to be doing our first live market. So this won't, this uh, the live feed for Friday won't be going through this page. Um, this is our business page, Dan Rocks. Um, down the bottom here now, Dan Rocks Crystal Bazaar events and online markets. If you're not um, joined that group, please do so because that will be um, where we'll be going live on the Friday. So you'll see if you are already joined that group, you'll see that the event page has been put up. 
and Adam is listed the crystals. So that's what we normally do. And then we normally open it at seven o'clock and people comment sold on that post. This time round, though, I will be going live at five o'clock on Friday and I will be discussing each crystal, giving it the description um, and you will be commenting sold on the live feed, not the pictures. So that's like the uh, that's like an Argos catalog. What's on the event page? That's just something for you to look at, to browse through, um, see what interests you, see what you're feeling a connection with, and then I'll come on live at five o'clock and go in deeper with a description of those crystals um, and allow you to look at them live. And if anything still does call to you, then you write comments sold on the um, post. And I think each crystal has got a number. So if you just write sold and the number of that crystal, then I know which particular crystal you've gone to because some of the posts have got multiple crystals on the picture. Um, so Amanda, I connected with... Yellow Jasper last night. I was going to choose red Jasper, but yellow kind of wanted to be chosen, so I went with it, even though I would normally associate the colour yellow with Sodabex. Absolutely. But it put me into a deep, almost sleep, where I seemed like I spent hours planting fruits and veg. OK, so, yeah, um, yellow jasper, exactly like you, I would feel that connection to the solar plexus. But all jaspers do contain that grounding um, element to it. All jaspers, as a rule, are quite grounding. So absolutely. And good that you made that decision. You thought red because red is a grounding colour. So must go for red jasper. But no, you trusted your intuition and you picked up the yellow jasper which is absolutely fine. I have no qualms with that at all. Um, and yeah, um, very slow, very calming. But again, planting those fruit and veg, exactly what we should be doing this time of year. So in a way, you know, using that ground, using that grounding energy, Amanda, to really hone in your, uh, plant your dreams, plant your goals, plant your inspirations, whatever you want to um see in full fruit or blossom or harvest later on in the year start putting them into the ground okay and also we're linking in we're very much now getting into the new moon and uh, new moon the full moon energy which is on thursday so we're starting to feel that okay i need to start um setting some goals i need to start releasing some of these ideas out into the universe so we're still thinking that so, Anne, my connection was straight. <laughs> I, I was saying Shiva Stone. I was back in wartime seeing the world through the eyes of a woman at a train station. She was on the train waving goodbye to loads of people on the platform. Couldn't make out anyone in particular. She was 20s. The train moved out of the station. And then I saw a lot of purple and white swirled in light colour. <sighs> I'm wondering if that's a past life, Anne. I want to say you might have had a past life um, connection there. And with Shiva, again, that vortex. So from going to ground to crown, um, vortexing, swirling. So the swirling purple and white colours. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was something that you were, um, you've experienced maybe a bit of a deja vu so yeah leslie aka moon dancer i connected with indigo gabro i saw violet colors this time i saw the face of a young lady which became an old woman then i saw an eye which opened so i placed a stone on my third eye 
saw white colours and was looking at a greener version of my garden. <laughs> a green, don't we all wish that our gardens were a greener version? Then an eye closed, so I thanked the guardian. Beautiful. And yes, um, Indigo Gabbro or Mystic Merlinite, it's its trademark name. Um, again, that would be a crystal I would use on the third eye. So I'm glad that you've felt that pull to put it onto your third eye. But again, it has got that grounding energy. So don't feel like I'm, I am liking the yellow jasper and uh, indigo gabbro there because I, um, it's nice that we're choosing crystals that are centering us, that are bringing that sense of calm because that's what grounding could just be for us. Um, so we don't have to have that. Um, so, yeah, um, Mystic Merlinite is another nice one for making things grow. So seeing that greener version of your garden. But look at your garden. Your garden is um, is part of your house, and you can what you can grow in your garden can symbolise on what you can grow within yourself. So seeing the garden being um, greener is almost like looking at yourself as being greener. So looking at yourself as being abundant with green leaves, abundant with fruit, um, energy. You know, green green energy so lovely stuff hey karen I hope you're well sweetheart so any more connections and then i will move on to the second part of the um quartz formations okay again i've got um i think i've got eight different types to show you Have any of us had a chance to look at our quartzes yet? Have we had a look to see if anything is, we're noticing anything in our quartz points or anything like that? Okay. And then so tomorrow, uh, before we talk to the lovely Esther of Moon Kestrel, I will, we'll go through the connections again. Um, so tomorrow we will connect with that crystal same type of crystal but we can change the shape so if we want to hold a sphere hold a sphere if we want to have a tumble if we want to change the shape of it we can do but keep to the same type of crystal um and then tomorrow we'll connect again like you've done these two days and then we'll carry it around with us so ideally try and get your connection in in the morning so you can carry it around with you. So you've got a good few hours of feeling it before we discuss that live at five tomorrow. But well done. I am loving these connections. And there's also people who are private messaging me their connections as well. So that is um, acceptable and absolutely perfect. And it's really nice to hear those. OK, so. Moving on to the quartz formations. And I thought I would bring these to the morning, to the afternoon. So this is my personal one, but I have got three here that are in stock as well. So these are Herkimer diamonds. And in fact, because these have got the yellow hematoid in them, there will be um, golden healer Herkimers. So Herkimers, known to be for their stout, for their stouty um, size, shape, um, and the double terminations. Okay, called Herkimer um, after the location of the Herkimer County in New York. So most of us might think of New York as uh, the Statue of Liberty and shopping and Central Park and all that. But um, there is a county called Herkimer, 
where you can go and mine these. So only those that are mined there can be called, they are the true Herkimers. And there's a few more examples that have just come on the screen for you there. So known as the attunement stone. Very useful to attune yourself with another person or an environment or an activity. Uh, they stimulate clairvoyant and clairaudient abilities. So we were hearing that quite a lot yesterday. There's quite a few um different quartz formations that were good for clairvoyant clairaudient um and that's because we're working around these areas and above um for me herkima is a soul star chakra stone really allows you to sit in that throne and connect to um your personal guides your personal angels um Great to elevate your tensions, calming of the outer bodies as well as our inner bodies. Really bringing in um, those calm energies that we need to um, go up a notch from the crown to the soul star. I love, love um, Herkimer's. They are just so nice. Lit, you know, you can get some that are so tiny um, and then you can get some of these size. Um, I mean, this is mine. And I take this to bed with me. Um, for the last four or five nights, this has been my um, sleeper. And those of you who are friends with me on Facebook may have seen my post that I put up last night about um, being a crystal do 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 because i sleep i've slept with hundreds of crystals so you know something to worth thinking about i love the face on this one hey joe glad that you're here a absolutely i um i do keep it, and even there's been a couple of nights where because obviously i'll bring it down with me in the morning or when i've gone back up to bed the night i've left it downstairs and it's really um when you're working like that you really feel oh i've left a part of me downstairs i need i need my herkima um so quite often i've trundled down the stairs and um, picked up picked it back up and took it back up to bed with me because it's just one of those things that when you're connecting with it, it does become a part. You are attuned to it um, and it does become part of you. So, yeah, for attunements, they are amazing. But, again, nice. For these times of year, um, for what we're going through at the moment, bring in that calmness, elevating the tension, just... Get rid of that. Um, so, yeah, clearing the bodies. Allowing total relaxation. So there, oh, and this one's got, look at that. That one's got, like yesterday, look at that little baby. How beautiful is that? Nice little. So, I don't know if that is a bridge or whether... 
it is just growing on there. So that is that is so cute. So they're the Herkimers. Um, like I say, if you are into clairvoyant, um, Jo has said that she has one. Um, she has one in her bra when she's doing her readings. So collect, so really having a strong connection for me, sitting on that soul star, allowing us to open up the crown and we can then sit on that throne of our soul star and really connect with our guides. Um, not just necessarily the archangels or the ascended masters, but definitely our guides, those who are working around us all the time. Um, family members who are on the other side, we can connect with our guardian angels, our personal angels. We can really connect with those um, through the soul star. And Herkimers are just so good for taking us up that step, to take us up to that level of beauty. Um, really, really beautiful. I love the energy of Herkimers. So that is another type of quartz. And then the next type, which we will all um, we are known of, is the Lemurians. Okay. So this is this is my one. This is the one that I it's it's actually by my bed. <laughs> oh, of course. Absolutely. I just want to say a big shout out to Lily, um, who is joining us and watching us on her TV and is making notes. Lily is Sarah's daughter. So bless her for um, sitting here with us and taking some notes. Is she connecting to Grounding Stones? Is she joining us? Lily, do you want to join us with our um, weekly grounding? You might have another sense of grounding. Um, I'm not talking about the grounding where your mummy is um, keeping you in your room for a month. I'm on about grounding, holding a grounding crystal and go through that connection. So a big hi to Lily there. So the Murians. So this is the one that I connect with. And I also have one at work, which is still in the office there, bless it, um, with my big chunk of citrine by my desk and my singing bowl. Um, and then this is Hobbies. And there are quite a few that are sp springing up around... Um, on the table here because we know them by their striations um but with black tourmaline and i've just got some so with black tourmaline we have the striations and with kunzite we have the striations and also with danborite But we can see that these striations go up and down. Okay. With the Murians, the striations go across, which we can call barcoding. Um, so they're short and stubble. So where all the others have gone like that, these are going across. Uh, and this we'll be looking at again uh, later on because this is a cathedral. Those different points, architectural shaping is what we call a cathedral, but we'll look at that in a, in a little bit. So th they are extraordinary crystals. So I love, love these. Um, first, 
my first one, which was this one. Yeah, we were at um, Alexandra Palace, Ali Pali, at their um, October show. We weren't exhibiting. We were going there as visitors because we're good friends with Spiritual Planet and Soaring Star. So we went to those guys to have a little chat, see how they're doing. And we were chatting at um, Spiritual Storm. And I was moving along, and I hadn't realised I'd picked this up. And then I was just moving along, chatting, talking. Adam was doing something at the other side of the store. I think I was talking to Jan, and he was talking to Stacey. Then he came over to talk to me. And he was like, what's that doing? And I was like, oh, um, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember picking this up, and I can't remember where we were, but where the Lemurians were on their store was quite a bit away so um adam says well you best have it then aren't you and i was like yeah i think i ought to <laughs> so yeah extraordinary stones um but called lemurian because um it's they are said to connect with the ancient lemurians um and they seeded so those barcodings we call like seeds <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and they seeded them with knowledge. Um, and then. And then buried them or left them somewhere where people who have the ability to um, download or decode these barvings. And by doing that we're able to understand um, that knowledge that they put into the stones. Um, working with these um, just gives you a huge awareness of consciousness. Um, a very distinct, very bright energy. You know when you're working with a Lemurian, it's zingtastic. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Carolyn. Oh, bless you. Oh, she's been connected to Tiger's Eye. Lovely, Lily. Nice one. Um. Yeah, they are, as far as I'm aware, the Murians are only found in one place, in the mountains in Brazil, the Minas, uh, Minas Gerais in Brazil. It's a mountain range. But we can use these for healing, use them for meditation. Um, so real nice formation, real beauty. And the barcoding is quite prevalent on them. Um, yeah. You can see them on most quartzes that you'll see them. Um, but then it's a Brazilian quartz. You'll know then that that's where it's come from. So. The next one we're going to look at. Are these groups of crystals that have had, looks like they've had chunks taken out of them. Okay, so you can see there. So growth interference. So 
So let's just go up on the bottom of the page. I'll spin that around so. And there's some examples up on the page as well. So this is where the matrix that the stone had, uh, where the, the crystals formed on, or another um, quartz. So there could have been another crystal sitting there that this one's worked its way around. But either the matrix or another um, crystal growing there. In either case, um, this the crystals would have been subjected to a drastic change of shape but still just worked around it to complete to complete the shape. So this would have been working, working. Something was there and it's gone, right, okay, well, I'll just work around that and got there. Sometimes calcite um, can be there as well. Even though calcite is only a three on the Mohs scale, so quartz can quite easily move it away sometimes it can just form around the calcite amethyst can be um, found to have quite a lot of calcite on it where it's just like okay you know you're growing there that's fine i'll just move around you this is quite um Again, this is one of Adam's, but just along it, you can just make out the little dents. Yes, we looked at Faden's yesterday, Lisa. Um, and it's funny that you're on tonight, Carolyn, because um, yesterday we were looking at Faden. But I think it's a German word. So I think it's Faden, the correct pronunciation. And we're also looking at fences, which is German for window, I believe. But yeah, yes, Lisa, holding a Lemurian. And it's what I like about um, Lemurians because it has got those striations that you can feel. So just by rubbing along those bars and with your eyes closed, you're just able to just tap into those energies of the old energy of what knowledge um, that civilization passed down to us. So real perfect. There's another. So again, this is a nice one to overcome obstacles. Letting us know that there was something there that was stopping this quartz getting into fruition. But did it stop it? No, it didn't hinder it. We can just learn to um, move around it. Go around that obstacle. Don't let it cut your path. Don't let it disturb what you are working on doing. You can still form with that. Um, and for me, this is more of a physical rather than a somebody. Um, sometimes we can get um, people or life things that can get into our way. This is more of a physical. So if you're dealing with um, an allergy, an intolerance, um, an illness, it's just showing you that, OK, you know, this this represents us in a physical form. The quartz may not have been complete, but he finished 
growing. So for us, there might be something missing, there might be something lacking. We might have something over, but don't use that to um, slow us down. Don't use that to just give up. We can still do things, we can still manifest, we can still complete challenges. Um, but with the quartz, we're still dealing with the crown. We're still dealing with the spiritual energies. So we can use the interference quartz um, to bring access to the astral, the spiritual, the higher planes. Um, but yeah, really nice if we're going through any traumas, going through any challenges. I mean... What we're going through at the moment is one big challenge. Um, so it would be a nice one for us to hold um, in going through this. Allowing us to trans transmute through ease. So there, the gr growth interference quartz. Nice little smoking. And some of them are really quite nice. This is my own um, smoky that I showed you yesterday. Um, this has been in my healing box for many, many, many years. And I love the, gro the growth interference there because it's just there. And it's perfect for my finger to go in. And then I can use that to sweep, you know, to sweep down a client, removing any energies. So um, they really play a good key into helping us to grip that stone as well. Another little added bonus there. Um, so we should now be on. The channeler, challenging, challenging, channeling quartz channeler. And you might just be able to see in this crystal the little silver lines. And this is a rutile quartz. I mean, it just looks like a little firework display going off. So there's little fine lines are crystals themselves. And this and this is a channeler by its shape. Okay, so it's quite small and it's quite a small point, but we've got a large face over here. And then, so this is the main face. This is the front of the... And then when we turn it around to the back face... It's a small, that's the back face there. So on the front face is bigger than the back face. And it depends. Um, the phantom that I showed you yesterday is a channeler. You've got the front face there. And then the back face is smaller. So this is allowing us, I like to use these up on the crown or on the third eye. And we can either um, have the small face on the third eye and we can project. We can bring that out 
um, what we're thinking, where we want to go, what we want to do. Or then we can turn it the other way and draw in. So lying down, having the bigger face on your um, third eye and allowing us to re re uh, retrieve, receive those downloads. <laughs> I'm glad your son pointed them out. They are like fine hairs. Rutile is normally called angel hair. Um, Rutile quartz, angel hair quartz, because it looks like um, hair that's caught in there, and it's a high-energy crystal Rutile quartz connected us to the angelic realm. So angel hair can either be in silver or in gold. So if we've got any quartzes there where the front face is bigger than the back face, then we have a channeler. Perfect to use, perfect to really bring in your spiritual gifts, um, really harness them, really fine point um, your psychic abilities, clairvoyance, mediumship, um, just connecting to those that are above. We can really do that. But then if there's any um, anything going on and you feel like you need to bring in that guide, channel that guide, hence why they're called channel, channeling crystals. Um, if you need to channel, just put the big face on your third eye and then allow with a small face pointing up to bring in those downloads, bring in that what is it is you need to channel. Um, they're not on this week's um, market, Caroline, but um, this one and um, the Phantom one, they are both stock. They are both for sale. Um, I can drop you a message afterwards if you like, and I'll let you know um, the prices of them. And that is no problem at all. Not that this is a selling um, video. This is why I like to cover up the price tags because um, I don't want people to think that I am selling while I'm talking. Um, this is more show and tell, but so many people do pop up afterwards and drop a message going, you showed me that Black Moonstone, something such, or you showed me that. It's really um, calling to me. Is it available? And if it is available, I'm happy to um, sort that out there and then. So now... We had a look yesterday at this one, okay? We looked at the bridge, but now we're looking at the double terminated. So this is a natural beauty. Um, such a lovely find to have natural double terminated quartz. The Herkimers, they are... Um, Natural double terminated. So these are these aren't grown um, from a matrix. So a matrix is that bed, the um, granite or the rock that forms the um, crystal. So something like this so this will um, be grown from rock, a matrix, a bed. These haven't. These have just been um, solo in the ground and then they are formed. So we have um, a completion. Sometimes called floaters, but I don't really like that word because there's another association we have for floaters. And, um, yeah, I'm not down talking about floaters at the moment. So 
Yeah. Um, they're grown from the central seed. So in the center is where they'll start and then they'll grow out and become a completion. So we can, these are good for your health, good to put under your pillow. Um, they're amazing, double terminated for chakra balancing. Um, get them onto your chakras, balancing them out. Because um, they're double terminated, we can use them for dual purposes. So for protection from mental and physical harm, we've got a double point. So we've got two um, places to come from. Okay. I mean, when I use ones in healing, um, this would be a real nice one to use. Um, because this part of the crystal we call a blade, these are blades, and there should be six of these blades because we know that the quartz grows in a trigonal system and it forms the hexagon. So we should have six sides or blades, and this is the the level of the energy it distributes. So it takes that energy out that way so when i'm rubbing this down a client i'm scanning i'm feeling if there's anything that doesn't flow freely there might be a little blockage or something and if i sense that sometimes by moving it over that area a few times can shift it sometimes it can be a little um stubborn in which case we'll then go on to one of the faces. So like it's got six blades, it'll have six faces. And the same energy that's distributed out of a blade will be the same but distributed from the face. So it's a little bit more intense. It's a little bit more compacted. So with that strength, I could just work on the area to see if that would help shift it and if that doesn't shift it then i go for the point okay and so the energy distributed there will be compacted by the face but then will also be the same energy distributed is the same going through that point so this is um something that really um, you need to be wary of because that energy there is so intense. Um, so anything that's stubborn yes Sarah it's got it's got striations it's got etches absolutely. Yeah, it's got barcoding. So this is it. When when you find out your quartzes and you investigate them, you realise that it's, it's not just clear quartz. Um, this is clear quartz with a bridge. I think it'll be a Tibet, um, Tibetan clear quartz. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily come from Tibet. It's just this darker, smoky colouring that gets given the name um, Tibetan um, but then it's got 
the the barcode in. So then you've just got a very long named quartz, a double terminated Lemurian bridge quartz. So they are really um, handy. I love the double terminated in the healing work. Really good for making decisions, either this way or that way. Direct. Uh, excellent for astral protect, protection, um, astral dreaming. Um, putting them under your pillow at night can increase and intensify the dream state. And excellent to use in meditation. Um, you can either hold it in both hands or just hold it in one or the other. Okay, we're transmuting. We said yesterday about quartz um, being able to structure and store, transmitting and amplifying. So, yes, <laughs> um, it's not a personal piece, Sarah, no. Um, yeah, this is stock. <laughs> yeah, quite a beauty. Uh, but then there's been some interference there, look. It looks like a shark has had a go at it. So, yeah. So that is that one. Um, I think the next one we're going to is generator. It might be a generator. But we will look at the generators. The generator quartz. So these are um, quite the... Um, the A star students, the straight A's, because they are formed in a real nice trigonal um, way, hexagonal, where they create a, and I think that is quite a perfect hexagon. So the lines are perfect and this point is central. So we've got a nice equal way, which is what we need to find in generators. We need to find um, those energies that are generated and manifesting um, going in a good way. If I show you that bridge again, it's 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 nearly there. It's it's had a bloody good go at becoming um, that good shape. Um, but just not quite. Again, there it's um, it's a little bit okay. So recognised for the formation of all six faces joining at the apex. And perfect natural generators are there. Um, and these are used to generate energy. In the subtle bodies. Um, depending on the consciousness, depending on your intentions. Uh, really nice to stimulate underactive chakras. So this one I showed you yesterday, this was the candle quartz. 
you can see the little the little ones there okay so this is so yeah so this is the the main crystal for energy generation um stimulating all portions of the physical the intellectual the emotional um, and the subtle bodies you can get polished generators um where they've the people have just um enhanced the shape of the crystal and made it like that they still work the same um i have no qualms with that but it's nice if we can get a natural one but they are powerful tools powerful powerful tools they are great and it's it's nice to for me i think that is one of the perfect structures i've seen um normally we can get them right that way um yeah you know i mean i think the second best would be that one you know which which isn't too far off you know that's that's a nine and a half that's a nine and a half out of ten but this one I think is a 10. Okay. So the double terminated, um, Sarah, this double terminated, yeah? Because we've also got the double terminated Herkimers as well. Um, so yeah, so that's the generators perfect for being in the center of grids, really bringing in harnessing that energy. Um, this is also stock, <laughs> throw it out there. That's also stock. If anyone was drawn to a candle, a candle quartz generator. So for this one, we talked about the candle quartz yesterday as um, those little spikes being those little hooks that are either attracting the abundance or stopping any negative energy coming into us. Um, real nice protection. Um, but then we've now got the added information onto it by it being that generator, being a very strong um energy direction directing that energy generating it and transmuting it beautiful beautiful so we now come to the cathedral quartz so i'll show you unfortunately this is my birthday present um this is personal so this, um, as you can see, is illustrial, um, smoky citrine. But then we have got the architectural structures that makes it a cathedral. If I bring the Lemurian back into play. We can see here, we can see the different, the different points, the different levels of points growing. I will do, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. So it bears a resemblance to the multi, multiple towers, uh, like those of the of a Gothic um, cathedral or castles. There's a few more examples gone on there. So that kind of structure.
So um, quite unique. And the property, as I said, to give access to the Akashic records. Now, that's something um, I've not delved into. Um, that's about us going into, um, yeah, going into our records, our sole purpose, um, finding out where what we've gone through through past lives. Uh, for chakra healing, uh, they could be used on all the chakras, but they do hold a specific. Um, they resonate with the heart. And that's to do with it being central to the seven chakras. So working on the seven chakras, we've got the heart at the middle, which encourages balance. So placing a cathedral on your heart chakra will help with that. Um, and because of its multi towers we have those multiple faces which is why um this one being the cathedral and the illustrial they share the similar properties i'll show you this one a bit more because i like this one So, yeah, so the cathedral um, contains the absolute and the ultimate wisdom and can provide for the transfer of the insight to the physical intellect via the higher self. Um, really taking those stepping stones. We can start off, we can start off in the little townhouses and then we can work our way up up the high rise up the cathedral get to that highest point the highest tower ah oh, i love love this next one okay this is in a cluster and this is the tabby tabular quartz One of my favourite formations. Again, I'll show you with this one. It's a Faden. But we'll have... It's the tabula shape. I will do, Caroline. I will do. Speak to you soon. Thank you for joining. So recognised by the flat crystal um, uh, um, with etching, which you can see. You can see the etching on this one. So not quite barcoding like the um, Lemurians. This is quite like a like the etch -a sketch. So not straight lines like a Lemurian. The etching will be um, like trying to do the outline of uh, New York skyline. You know, you've got all the skyscrapers. So we. So these are high frequency crystals, um, and if you and if you resonate with those frequencies, um, you can really um, tap into your psychicness, really tap into the higher energies, um, but a nice communicational really helps you to communicate um, that information, retrieve it. So 
So this one here is in a cluster. So here we see a typical point of a quartz. And this one, it's just decided just to go a bit elongated. Go in a bit more straight, whereas all the others are of quite um, normal. It's just that one. Just wanted to do a bit, a bit, a bit better, and we've got a bit of something grew through it. Got a bit of a growth interference going on there. So there, the tab is. Now we come to the windows or the activations which are quite a um, little bit similar. So a window is that there, okay, like a diamond shape. And there's the other examples. So these crystals are used. I mean, it's such a shame that it's got a dink because this is a beautiful, beautiful crystal. Um, I would like to work with this one. So you got the window, and as that's um, states um, we see through this window so seeing through clairvoyance or scrying uh, many forms of divinations so tarot oracle tea leaves um, pendulum work any of those sort of divinations that we do we can use this um so i'm just there are some striations along there there is etching um got some etching work going on that side so that is what we mean by a window So the diamond shape, two triangles, but they're joined at their base. Um, and as that uh, representation of um, the two aspects of ourselves. So we've got the one point ascending to spirit and the other descending into earth. So real nice. So that's what we mean if we've got a window quartz. So not to be confused with the, the fencer, the skeletal quartz, because obviously fencer is German for window, but that's more the skeletal forming of layers where the outside's formed faster. This is where the faces have joined and then we've got a window forming there. Um, yeah, if we meditate, we might get to the, um, to see the clearer picture, to meditate on this, we can either see out of that window and see the clearer picture, see what's really going on, but working in divination, we can work inside and really, um, yeah, see inside of the matter. 
And then we have the activation, which is quite similar. And I've only got small pieces um, to show you. But this is more. It doesn't make the diamond. So we've got the nice diagrams at the side there. So just there you see it's a bit like a window, but it's not a diamond shape. It's more rhombus. It's got those parallel off-centered square. Where was the other one? I don't know even I don't think this one would be much better. Just there. Okay. So the activation. And it depends where this is from the main face. So this is the main face. That's where the activation is. So we go by this side. So this is a left activated quartz. That being on the left. So it's um, so for the left side, um, it's said to increase the left brain function. Then if it's a right side, uh, you see this one's quite big. So it's this this bit here. This is what we mean by an activation. So it's not it's not two triangles. Okay, if I if I went from that corner. There isn't that corner there. The corner drops down. So it's not the two triangles like the window joined at the base. This is more oblongy. And that's the main face. So this one is a right activated quartz. So working on the right, we face, we face the quartz away. We don't look and go, all oh, right, you're... Because by looking at it, that will be on the left. Um, but we go by face, face. So we're facing the same way. The main face is facing the same way I'm looking at. So we go by where it is there. It's on the right hand side. Are we all? Um, are we all going on about this one? We've absolutely. With you, Carolyn and Lucy, was that the one that you're on about going off into places? And I love the clearness of that. I mean, even though it has got that dink, you know, I've got dinks, but I still work. Um, yeah, I wouldn't let that put me off um, that one. That window is quite spectacular. So that's the difference between a window and an activation is just that elongated the rhombus shape um, closely linked to one another um, it is just the uh, the properties are the same it is just that different shape there that just um puts it uh, but if we're doing um if we're doing any readings or if we're doing any divination work if we're working with a right-handed right activated quartz we're looking into someone's future if we're working with a left window we're looking into their past um so yeah that is those that is i think
It just took you. Absolutely. This is my problem. When we are setting up um, the event or we're packing down, I'm the worst person to um, be there because sometimes I'll be unpacking crystals and all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, I'll discover something about it or it will just take me somewhere. So I absolutely understand that, Carl, Carlin, um, how it will just, um, you look at something and you just, oh, like the Lemurian I got off a stool, you know. Um, you know, they, they draw you in. And the next thing you know, you're walking around holding a crystal and you're like, where's this come from? Has it even come from the stool? Oh, my word. What's happening? Um, yeah. So, you know, clear quartz, it's not just clear quartz. Have a look at your points. Have a look at what you've got at home and rummage around. I mean, there are still there are still so many more. You know, you've got the twins. You've got the Isis um, shape. Um, I'm trying to figure out um, from this Lemurian, because I talked about the Dow yesterday being the 737373. Three, seven, three, seven, three. But my personal Lemurian, was it the Lemurian? I thought it was. No, it was this one, which I always think is mine. Because it's quite similar to my one, but it's not. It's actually stuck. My one, I think, is behind the screen. So this one here, the faces, we've got a five, a three, a five, a three, a five. So I'm still trying to learn with that, and it makes such a beautiful um shape it's so symmetrical um, i don't think symmetrical is the right word but um i'm connected to quartz now so even i'm still kind of like looking going oh well i know a seven three seven three seven three is a dell i don't know about a five and a three five three five three so i will investigate more um, I mean, look at the look at the etchings. They are just oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you've loved this. Um, yeah, it is. It is nice because although clear quartz is that master crystal that we all love and um, should be in everyone's collection. There is just so, um, so much more. But I mean, even, you know, even just through all the quartzes, um, look at your citrine points, your smokies, your amethysts. Um, there will be um, record keepers, keys. Um, there will be different things there that you can look at. Count the faces, count the sides, count the points. Um, they'll all equate to something. They are amazing of course you can ask more information leslie um you could always ask for more absolutely so um yeah just have a good look at them um and if there's anything here that is spoken to you that's jumped out at you um yeah this, this is mine yes that one's mine and i was getting that one confused with this one <laughs> <laughs> they can look so similar. I'm just glad that we've got price tags on some of the stock. Um, yeah, because even my one has uh, an activation, not a window, an activation, which is my right side. So I can look into my future. But oh, it's looking good. So, um, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, it has been amazing. I will look into um, what we're going to be doing on Sunday. 
because the rest of the days are filled. Please, please um, do join us tomorrow night for the amazing Esther from Moon Kestrel's Nest. We'll be um, talking to her, but again, um, have some questions ready. Ask her some questions yourself, okay? We're going to be talking about the Yantra boards. Uh, we're going to be talking about the properties of the different woods. Um, so um, Rowan, Birch, Alder, Oak. Um, then we're going to be delving into a bit of oracles, the oracle cards. She does live one card readings on her page on Sunday nights. Uh, and then we're going to end on some drumming. An absolute amazing lady, our our soul sister. So please, um, live at five tomorrow night, do join us then. Then on Thursday, we're going to um, do the full moon altar. Again, come with some um, intentions, come with some thoughts on what crystals need to be put onto that altar. We'll already have some crystals from the new moon. We'll also have some crystals there from Beltane. We're now going to add to that with the full moon. And I'm going to light the cauldron. We're going to burn those intentions. We're going to let those goals go out there. So and if you want to add a few more to the pots, you're more than welcome to. And then Friday, we're going to be over on our other page doing the online market. And then Saturday, I think, I think our very good friend Karen. Karen Price, I think she's joining us for um, for the rock seat. Um, and then Sunday, who knows what we're going to talk about. If you've got any suggestions at all that you want me to talk about, you want me to cover, um, please message me, please comment, um, and let me know what you want me to talk about crystal-wise um, or not crystal-wise, and I will come on and have a little chat. All right? Um, but from me to you, thank you very much. Before Adam cuts me off, because he's thinking you've been saying goodbye for the last 10 minutes. Enjoy your evening. Have a good one, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube as well. God bless. Sweet dreams. See you tomorrow.